Hi, and welcome back to our spread spectrum test setup. The last variable parameter of our frequency modulation is the frequency deviation, which defines the frequency range in which the carrier signal will be modulated. Now let's have a look at how the frequency deviation affects the resulting frequency spectrum. In order to do so, I have set the waveform generator to output a square wave at 2.5 MHz with an amplitude of 100 mV RMS. The spectrum analyzer is set to measure at a fixed center frequency of 2.5 MHz with a span of 5 MHz and a resolution bandwidth of 10 kHz. When I turn the output of the waveform generator on, we can see one peak at 2.5 MHz with an amplitude of 74 dB microvolts. Okay, let's turn on frequency modulation. In this case, I'm using an upramp signal as my modulation signal. The FM frequency is set to 10 kHz and the deviation starts at 1 kHz. I will now slowly increase the frequency deviation and we will have a look at the spectrum. By increasing the frequency deviation, we can see the signal amplitude drops, which is exactly what we want to achieve when using spread spectrum clocking for EMI reduction. As can be seen, increasing the frequency deviation spreads the spectral components of the modulated carrier over a broader frequency range and thus further reduces the signal amplitude. So far so good. Now you might be tempted to increase the frequency deviation as much as possible in order to achieve the lowest signal amplitudes. There are some issues one might run into. First off, when modulating a clocking signal, timing issues may occur as the frequency modulation introduces additional jitter into the clocking signal. But even if that's not a problem in your application, there is one major effect you'll have to keep an eye on. A rectangular signal, which we're using in this case and which is used in most clocking applications, comes with a lot of harmonics. Now we only had a look at the frequency band around the fundamental frequency. Let's increase the bandwidth of the spectrum analyzer so we can see some of the harmonics as well. I'll set the stop frequency to 30 MHz and now we can see five harmonics of our rectangular carrier signal. Okay, I will once again increase the frequency deviation step by step and we can observe the frequency spectrum. As can be seen, the plateaus around the harmonic frequencies widen proportionally to the number of harmonic. This happens to a point where those plateaus start overlapping and the individual spectral components of those plateaus start adding up again, which defeats the original purpose of using spread spectrum modulation for EMI reduction. So when setting up your spread spectrum clocking parameters, keep this in mind and use the appropriate formulas to calculate the maximum frequency deviation before overlapping occurs. Anyways, thanks a lot for your attention and I hope you've learned something today.